Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Soul Ashraya podcast, where we, uh, it's a weekly Bhakti podcast, where we seek the shelter and the wisdom of our dear Lord Krishna through Shastra, prayer, and conversation. I am your host, Bhakti Jake, and with me is my friend and teacher, Balaram Shakti Das. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We were just talking about the microphone situation here. Does it sound <laughs> good when I'm in the microphone, right in that microphone? How, how does that sound? Sounds good here in this little room. Sounds like I should be a, a late night jazz day on a radio. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can if we can hear your breathing then it's uh, it's appropriate <laughs> uh, what are you wearing <laughs> oh man Woo. krishna <laughs> Oh boy. So it's Sunday. It's another beautiful day here in Ra Cha Cha. How's the weather in Arizona today? Is it dry? Is it still dry? <laughs> very, very desert conditions. <laughs> really? Really? Dude, yeah. that's so cool. <laughs> Um, you know, exactly the same as yesterday and the day before and the day before that. All right. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. <laughs> so I wanted to just uh, kind of make a few announcements here for our viewers and listening audience um, the, for the people on WhatsApp and YouTube and in the land of the Internet. I wanted to. Just real quickly, let you know that we tried to change the settings for the meeting, but Zoom, you have to have at least one security setting. So as of right now, I think the waiting room is still on and I tried to change it. I guess I got to go in there again and kind of like press some more buttons or like get a new passcode. But um, I wanted to just let everyone know that if you try to get in and there and you get into the waiting room, I'm going to pay attention to it and really make sure to just pay attention to it and let you in. Someone tried to get in yesterday and I missed it and I felt so bad about it because I mean, it could have been anyone, you know? I mean, it could have been some, you know, like a, a holy Swami trying to get in and I missed it, you know? Yeah, wow. I know. So now it could, um, could have been someone no. down on their luck, and this was their only chance to hear about Krishna. This was it? This was and it. You, kind of, you blew it for him. I know. Now I gotta, so gotta chance some extra rounds to take care of that wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love that? <laughs> No, Jake, you're missing the point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, um, and also, real quick, I wanted to maybe just take a second here and also say that if you, um, our show, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not on the WhatsApp group at all, our show is always Saturday and Sunday, 2 p.m., Eastern time. So I don't know what that translates to wherever you're watching this from, but I wanted to let you know that. Also, I have an Instagram account called Bakta Jake. And it clearly says on my Instagram account that this is um, the, you know, the Sola Shraya podcast. I'm going to do more work to it to make it easy for everybody. But I just wanted everyone to let you know that that's how you can reach us if you need to. 
Um, also the WhatsApp group, if you can get into the WhatsApp group, if you have WhatsApp, I'm still not 100% sure on how WhatsApp, I don't even know how it works. You, it's, you put in your phone number, I don't know. All I know it's, it's like secured from end to end. So you can send your friends all kinds of nasty messages and no one will ever know about them but you and them. <laughs> not that you wanna get nasty. <laughs> So anyway, announcement time is over. Okay. And yeah, you can also find me on Facebook by the name written here as it's spelled. It's yes. a pretty unique name. Yes. Have have seen any other follower on Shakti Dasses on Facebook. Yeah. It's a beautiful but, name. Uh, yeah. It, it's a beautiful name for a beautiful man. Why, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of beautiful men, I think maybe we should just uh, start saying some, some invocations and getting into the word. <laughs> if, just in yes. case you're new, we are reading out of the Krishna book. This is what this podcast is all about for this this moment in time is that we're reading from the Krishna book and we are just into chapter one. We are going to be picking it up today uh, just a few pages into chapter one and I want to thank everyone for watching us. Thank you all for watching us and having a hunger to want to listen to um, the word of Krishna and um, and uh, and to join us in our adventure and in our talk about uh, the glories of Sri Krishna. So with that, take us away to an invocation, sir. All right. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Om Jnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurum Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha. Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamni Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarni Pancha Kalpaturubis Chakripa Sindhubya Evicha Patitanam Pavani Bio Vaishnave Bio Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jayo It is a very auspicious time of the year right now. There's, yeah. Yes, we are. Um, Jan, Jan Mastami is coming up this weekend, isn't it? No. No. No, there's something else going on. I forgot the name of it. It's, it's this weekend? Thing. Yeah, this weekend. I guess it's not Jan Mast. Jan Mastami is all, always in at the end of August, isn't it? Uh, I don't, not always, oh. but it, I believe it's in August this year, yeah. Right. So what I was trying to say <laughs> is there, there are literally so many holidays and, and this is why we're doing this show for, so I can make the mistakes for you as a newcomer. <laughs> yeah, I, I can be the example and make the mistakes for you. If you are new to Krishna consciousness, I am new and we're, we're going to get through this together. Okay. So what I was trying to say 
was that <laughs> this weekend there's a little thing going on in New York City called Rock oh. Sinatra. Yes, yes. Okay. So I was able to get a ride down to it on Saturday, one day. Nice. Yes, one day. Going down with Mukunda Das for one day on Saturday. So that's what I was trying to say. I know that that celebration is kind of, usually is, is a pretty auspicious. It happens at an auspicious time. The full moon. Yeah. No. No, they <laughs> no, okay. They have them all season long. Oh, okay. <laughs> they start in what spring and they go better part of the year they're happening all over the world oh okay oh okay. <laughs> only all year <laughs> because I no no there is there isn't like an original john or um rathiatra day uh that's actually it is actually coming up snaniatra is uh just happened this weekend so Rathiatra will be in two weekends, the original, the original holiday. Okay. Yeah. Which is totally coincidental than New York City. Okay. Okay. Uh, well. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just it just so happened that um, Mukunda needed a couple of people to ride with him. We're gonna leave early in the morning and. Um, and just go down for the one day. So I'm really looking forward to it. That's going to be this Saturday. So no show this Saturday, unless you want to do like a solo thing. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, I could have your time. But uh, yeah, maybe we'll just hit it Sunday. Maybe. I was thinking of going because a bunch of my friends are going to be there. Maybe you yeah. can meet some of them. You can pick them out of the. 40,000 people that are there. Yeah. It's, you know, needle in the haystack. Yeah. No, I mean, as far as devotees go, I don't know, several thousand, probably a few yeah. thousand devotees. Yeah. But uh, one of them is as tall as me, so you might be able to pick them out. Um, yeah, I was I was thinking of fine, but flights are a little a little expensive. Yeah. Um, right. So it's gonna be the first one uh, I've ever been to. Have you ever been to the New York City one? Or um, yeah. no, yeah. you've been to them. New York before. City, incredible Rathiatra. I was there last year. Hmm. Last year, and was I there? No, I think that was my first one in New York City last year. I just, I guess I was here two years ago. Last year I was on the East Coast okay. at this time. Yeah. Or was, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I guess I was. That's right. I was in New Vrindavan last year and there was like a van of us that went and I came back. I was, I started feeling sick the night after, like that night. And then the next morning, like really started feeling sick. By the time I got to New Vrindavan, I was like high fever. It was like really bad. Wow. Yeah. I, I guess I got COVID. Oh, wow. I tested, I tested positive. So like Rathiash was super, you know, enthusing. Yeah. And then I just completely lost all of it. I mean, not spiritually, of course, but... As far as my energy and enthusiasm, it just like completely tanked. And there was a huge festival at New that week that Sachinandan Swami was doing a holy name mm. immersion retreat. You know, where you deepen uh, your meditation on the holy name, and he he does incredible workshops. So like Wednesday through Friday or something, he was doing that, and I had to quarantine that week. So I missed practically the whole festival. I caught the last lecture, his like closing lecture. I was released from, from the den 
Mm. And I got to hear that. <laughs> it was rough. Yeah, it knocked me out. Wow. But uh, anyway, other than that, if you don't get sick <laughs> from all the people, it's incredible. The Kirtans, Kirtans on the East Coast are super fired up. Yeah. Really, really good. Yeah. Kadama Kanuna Swami was there last year. I got to meet him there, actually. And uh, he, the Swami who just left his body a few months right. back. And right, yeah, yeah. Arguably, not that it's an argument, but he's, he's I should say, easily one of the best. Yeah. Uh, Kirtaneers, Kirtan leaders in our movement. Like, hands down, universally accepted, you know, so it was a big loss to the movement. Yeah. I was just watching yeah, some of his Kirtans. Swami was there. So you were just watching what? I was just watching some of his Kirtans, actually, on uh, YouTube. They were, they filmed, they got to film some, some of his Kirtans with, like, a high-quality camera. You know what I mean? So it's not like just a cell phone. It was like an actual real camera, you know, and yeah. um, like, you know, it, it looked so good and it sounded so good. I'm, I would imagine those were probably within the last couple of months before he passed on. Yeah. Yeah. And man, there were some bangers he was doing too. I tell you what, I was like, wow, man, like, yeah, I, he knocks you out. I know it's like it's so wild because I literally heard like uh, actually Srinivas is the one that told us about that whole situation with him. And he told us about it, you know, back during the winter at some point. And I had like seen the guy and and then Srinivas had told us what was going on with him. Like this guy's on a timeline, like he's going to pass away pretty quickly here, you know. And boy, I tell you man just so fast you know life goes by so fast and he, his cure times i mean you want to when when there's a good cure time going on you want to say that that is like that real real music you know like that's that real like you try all this other music and try to like you know like uh get get to a certain feeling you know mm. you don't even know what feeling when you do kirtan you know what feeling you're going for you know mm. and that to me is like the real music and when you get those good merdangas going and when you get in the pocket i mean it it is ecstatic i mean that's just one word for it you know i mean powerful powerful yeah. things happen during kirtan so yeah i was so I'm looking forward to uh, New York City this weekend. If this happens to get posted up, um, you know, and, and if um, you run into me in New York City, I, I'll, I will definitely give you an autograph. I will sign my name or whatever, whatever, you know. So, yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, I'm pretty, you know, I'm, I consider myself to be like a man of the people. <laughs> pretty big deal kind of kind of a big deal kind of that's right <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, if you see me on the street just go hey back to jake what's up and i'll say hey what's up bless you bless you Hare krishna and then i'll just keep on walking <laughs> <laughs> No, I love meeting people and I love cultivating good. Things. I actually met, I met a Zoom friend at the New York Rath Yatra last year. I had never seen him in person. Uh, Jeff Ackler. We were part of a yeah. Yeah. reading group. Yeah. And yeah, we saw each other and we're like, well, it was really cool. I, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to that because we live in this day and age where we know so many people, yeah. you know, on, on social media. And then when you see them in real life, I mean, it's kind of cool because you already have, you know them by their posts or, or whatever. So when you see them in, in person, it's like really like, oh, wow. Hey, you know, awesome. And then, and then you have to do the, the selfie, you know, right away. 
I actually do know this person. This person's real. Ah. <laughs> so everyone else knows they are real. We're all real. It's all really happening. Okay. Yes. So now that we have talked about Rathiyatra, let's get into the word. All right. All right. You want to start us off? Yes, I will start. So yesterday we read, uh, we got up to page 12 in the Krishna book. 13. Yeah. Um, yes, 13. Yes, yes. Um, so we're at the point where um, there's been a little bit of background about what's going on with the uh, Purusha Suktas. Um, Lord Brahma uh, has received the message from Lord Vishnu. And um, there's the, the, every, every, the stage is kind of set, basically. So yeah, Krishna is going to appear in this time in the Yadu dynasty yes. in the city, capital city of Mathura. Yes. 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 So I will begin reading. And should I do the screen share or what do you think? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can just read for a little while and then we'll discuss. Yeah. Okay. I gotta make this bigger. Okay. Once uh, upon a time. Okay. Okay, so. <clears throat> Once upon a time, Vasudeva, the son of Sarasena, just after marrying Devaki, was going home on his chariot with his newly wedded wife, the father of Devaki, known as Devaka, had contributed a lavish dowry because he was very affectionate towards his daughter. He had contributed hundreds of chariots, completely decorated with gold equipment. At that time, Kamsa, the son of Ugrasana, in order to please his sister Devaki, had voluntarily taken the reins of the horses of Vasudeva's chariot and was driving. According to the custom of, the, of Vedic civilizations, when a girl is married, the brother takes the sister and brother-in-law to their home because the newly married girl may feel too much separation from her father's family. The brother goes with her until she reaches her father-in-law's house. The full dowry contributed by Devika was as follows. 400 elephants fully decorated with golden garlands, 15,000 decorated horses, 1,800 chariots, he also arranged for 200 beautiful girls to follow his daughter. The Satriya system of marriage, of marriage still current in India dictates that when a Satriya is married, a few dozen of the bride's young girlfriends, in addition to the bride, go to the house of the king. The followers of the queen are called maidservants, but actually, they act as friends of the queen. This practice, practice is prevalent from time immemorial, traceable at least to the time before the advent of Lord Krishna 5,000 years ago. So Vasu, Vasudevaya, or Vasudeva, sorry, brought home another 200 beautiful girls along with his wife, Devaki. While the bride and bridegroom were passing along in the chariot, there were different mm -hmm. kinds of musical mm -hmm. instruments playing to indicate the, the auspicious moment. There were conch shells, buggles, whatever a buggle is. Bugle. Bugle, okay, sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> my own language would think that I'd be able to read it, you know. Drums, kettle drums, combined together. They were vibrating a nice concert. The procession was passing very pleasingly, and Kamsa was driving the chariot, when suddenly there was a miraculous sound vibrated from the sky, which especially announced to Kamsa, Kamsa, you are such a fool. You are driving the chariot of your sister and your brother-in-law, but you do not know what the eighth child of, the, of this sister will kill you. Kamsa was the son of Ugrasana of the Boja dynasty. It is said that Kamsa was the most demoniac of all the Boja dynasty kings. Immediately after hearing the prophecy from the sky, he caught hold of Devaki's hair and was just about to kill her with his sword. <laughs> okay. Woo! Shotgun wedding. <laughs> 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 yeah it's the number one killer I'm so sorry <laughs> Vasudeva was astonished at Kamsa's behavior and in order to pacify the cruel shameless brother-in-law he began to speak as follows the great reason and evidence he's, he said my dear brother-in-law, Kamsa, you are the most famous king of the Boja dynasty, and people not know that you are the greatest warrior and valiant king. How is it that you are, are so infuriated that you are prepared to kill a woman who is your own sister at this auspicious time of her marriage? Why should you be so much afraid of death? Death is already born along with your birth from the very day you took your birth you began to die suppose you are 25 years old that means you have already died 25 years every moment every second you are dying why then should you be so so much afraid of death final final death is inevitable you may die either today or in a hundred years. You cannot avoid death. Why should you be so much afraid? Actually, death means annihilation of this present body. As soon as the present body stops functioning and mixes with the five elements of material nature, the living entity within the body accepts another body. According to this present actions and reactions, it is just like when a man walks on the street. He puts forward his foot, and when he is confident that his foot is situated on sound ground, he lifts the other foot. In this way, one after another, the bodies change and the soul transmigrates. So how, see how the plant worms change from one twig to another so carefully? Similarly, the living entity changes his body as soon as higher authorities decide on his next body. As long as a living entity is conditioned within this material world, he must take material bodies one after another. His next particular body is offered by the laws of nature according to the actions and reactions of this life. Okay, so let's just stop right there for a second. <clears throat> so, I have heard very much lately that whatever you're thinking about at the time of death, that is where you're going to be going to. So, um, what do you think this is saying right now up to this point? This guy's driving along in a marriage procession. He hears this loud noise that says that the eighth child of this woman is going to kill him. So he tries to kill her right there and then and there. So, and then he gets this talking to about how he shouldn't be afraid to die because it, it's just all a big cycle anyway. So do you want to speak to that? Yeah. So, 
Vasudev is, um, he's trying to pacify Kamsa with logic. Um, and he's, he's going to try to convince him in various ways. So that's really what's going on. Uh, yeah, I first just want to say like, you know, just, it's really something else to imagine this scene, you know, first of all, this dowry, it's like, uh, are you going to be given 400 elephants for your daughter's wedding? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know, 15, right? 15,000 horses. <laughs> what? Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, whenever I hear these processions from like Mahabharata, it just blows my mind. Like hundreds, hundreds and thousands of, you know, steeds and it's just incredible uh and it's just it's such a nice custom um that's taking place here for the brother to take the sister you know because it's like you know it's first like the father hands the sister you know over to the husband or the i'm sorry the daughter to the husband, right? Like in the church, right? Like we still, the Christian church still has that tradition, right? Like the father will walk down the aisle. Yeah. And then he's like, I'm giving you my daughter, right? Please take care of her. Uh, and so it's like, there's that, but then uh, for her to go home, it, like it's, really nice like what what's happening like what i'm seeing with that is like her brother is able to relate like the father relates to the son-in-law in a very kind of um arm's length like maybe it's not like such a intimate relationship that they have it's more of like a gentleman's respect you know whereas the brother like he can hang out with the brother-in-law you know the the wife's brother you know can like has a a special relationship yeah. with the with the bride and groom yeah. so he can kind of he can accompany her to that like more intimate um event of her going to uh her new home which you know it can bring a lot of um what's the word just like you know home sickness or you know yeah. nervousness and so to have uh to have him there it's you know it's a really nice show of, um not as much story as just you know friendship amongst the siblings anyway i don't know if i'm describing that very well but i think you get you get what i'm saying uh so it's like kamsa was that guy you know he was like this is my dear sister right i um yeah and i think in the uh actual bhagavatam it goes into more detail like he actually uh, professes that this is my dear sister. I'm going to be her, you know, the, the best older brother for her and, you know, take her, I'm going to, you know, drive this chariot. And it's like, wow, what a nice guy. And then what happens? Like it takes one second for him to turn completely 180 degrees and, like prepared to slice her head off. Yeah. Like talk about, uh, you know, narcissism. Like, uh, dang dude, like that's, that's a brutal, you know, brutal twist there. Yeah. So, uh, 
so this is really showing this is like what it's showing here is this is Comp's character you know it's it's really like in in one scene that's kind of all it takes for you to understand the character of this man right yeah. uh, he doesn't actually have any love even his supposedly closest relationship he's willing to turn on her in a moment uh so that's that's his nature whereas vasudev is the total opposite even in the most trying circumstances he's a man of honor mm. and so we'll see that in the coming pages we'll see just how honorable vasudev is yeah. and kamsa even knows that and i'm sure Prabhupada will uh yeah, he did come, yeah, on um, page 17, he'll say that directly. That Kamsa is even aware of that. Uh, so so here's, here's the scene, it, Kamsa just totally loses his cool. You know, his demonic nature has kicked into high gear and Vasudev has to think quick, you know, to save his sister. You know, so he's got to act on the fly. So he just immediately starts speaking to like, he's just like throwing words out there, um, hoping that something will pacify him, right? And so this is the route that he takes, uh, very similar to the route that Krishna takes in the Bhagavad Gita, mm -hmm. right? Arjuna loses his cool and Krishna starts by saying you know you're mourning for something which is not worthy of of grief you know this body body when you know by taking birth the body is destined to die so you shouldn't grieve just for the sake of death uh and then he, he continues from there he goes on to answer any other argument that could be posed so vasudev is doing the same thing uh and so yeah talking about transmigration of the soul and so the point here that we can um to be understood it's you know as far as doubt regarding transmigration or reincarnation um is that there is continuity of consciousness if you can accept that then reincarnation will make perfect sense uh so and it's also the idea of karma um when you if you accept karma the only way for karma to make sense is if you accept transmigration of the soul the only way for transmigration of the soul to make sense is if you accept karma and with karma um, is this continuity of consciousness uh, because there has to be a conscious entity to which that karma is applying you know so like you have your personal karma um, which is brought about by your conscious actions you know and so your consciousness like that's the symptom of you the soul Right. This, uh, consciousness means there's a soul wherever you have consciousness there's a soul wherever there's a soul there's consciousness you can't have consciousness without the soul nor can you have a soul without consciousness uh, and so when you perform activities you get a certain karma and that follows you uh, so there has to be continuity. There has like that person has to remain existing. It's kind of a strange way to think about it or to explain it. Um, but it's like, if you perform a crime and then actually this is really funny, something that I heard once on this, I was on this, uh, semi-pro volleyball team actually from the chesapeake area 
And there are a bunch of Cali kids on the team, um, which doesn't make sense opposite side of the country, but anyway, that's how it worked. And two of them were, were talking, like one of them was talking about this other kid. I don't even know if he was present, but he was saying like, just to give you an idea of how stupid this guy is, when we were in Europe playing pro, like they were playing, they're professionals, they're actual professionals. When we were playing pro, like the, these Europeans, they asked us, so like, how does it work with all the different states, like having different laws and stuff? Is it like Europe, all these different countries? And this kid was like, so basically, if you murder someone in one state and you go across state border, like you, there's nothing they can do. You're free. And the other kid was like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, that's not true. Don't listen to him. He's an idiot. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's not true, really? Oh, no. Oh, no. Like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So why are you in you know, little hillbilly villain? Oh, man. <laughs> no. Uh, so the idea is if you perform a crime, the perpetrator, you know, there has to it's not just like if if the perpetrator leaves, then the crime doesn't, you know, it just vanishes. That the police are like, no, there someone performed this crime, and we're we're not going to rest until we find him, right? right? So uh, usually, right? So it's the same way with karma. It's like if you do a whole bunch of bad things in your life, it's not it's just like, well, I'm going to just skip town, and then I'm scot free. It's like, no, you're not. You know, that follows you. Right. So as ye sow, so shall ye reap, you know, stated very clearly in the Bible. So the thing about the Bible, actually, I received, a, I haven't read it yet. My God brother sent me a paper. Um, I might have flipped, I think I, I, I flipped through it, but I haven't read through it. On reincarnation in the Bible. And he's like, while you can't prove reincarnation from the Bible, you can't, you definitely can't disprove it. But if you accept reincarnation, then all of these verses make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. And he, so he puts a lot of arguments and he was explaining some of them to me and they're like, yeah, I mean, it really makes sense. So again, and it's like, once you accept um, reincarnation, karma makes a lot of sense. If you don't, it doesn't make sense. So for Jesus to say, as you sow, so shall you reap. That doesn't make any sense if you can commit a whole bunch of abominable activities and then, you know, die before you get hit by the reactions. That would be a fallacy. Then it's like, well, he didn't reap. Or if you you're born crippled, it's like, why am I reaping this? This is a sinful reaction. The Bible even says in one place he was saying, like, that's a sinful reaction. And it's like, wait, wait a minute. He didn't perform any sin. So how, how can we understand that? So the way that we understand it is there is a continuity of consciousness, meaning the soul. Uh, so Vasudev is trying to break this in, you know, through the barriers of Kamsa's thick head, right? He's like, bro, you like, hold on a minute. Try to understand what you're doing here. If you do this, it's going to be bad for you in so many ways. And, but he starts with like the cause of him, you know, losing his cool is he's afraid of death. And so he's like, so he's basically approaching, it's like a two pronged approach here, maybe a three pronged approach, but he's uh, saying, don't be afraid of leaving your body. That's, like you don't actually lose anything from that. And secondly, what is it that you're not losing? Like that's the thing that you need to be very conscientious about as meaning karma, like what you are, you know, sowing, you know, in the, in your fields. So, uh, so that's, yeah, that's the approach he's taking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, let me read on some more a little bit here. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Or do you, you want me to read? 
Uh, I don't know. I don't want to. Yes. I don't want to. If if you want to, you can read. I don't want to put on like a, a burden. You know. You know what I'm saying? I'll read. I'll be like the workhorse and read. You know. Oh no no that's no, okay. We'll okay. If you alternate. Like. Yeah. Thank you though. Okay. This body is exactly like one of the bodies which we always see in dreams. During our dream of sleep, we create so many bodies according to mental creation. We have seen gold and we have also seen a mountain. So dream, we can see a golden mountain by combining the two ideas. Sometimes in dreams, we see that we have a body which is flying in the sky. And at that time, we completely forget our present body. Similarly, these bodies are changing. When you have one body, you forget the past body. During a dream, we may make contact with so many new kinds of bodies, but when we are awake, we forget them all. And actually, these material bodies are the creations of our mental activities. But at the present moment, we do not recollect our past bodies. Yeah, these, these are all just such brilliant breakdowns of spiritual philosophy like Vasudev is just brilliant here um yeah again he's he's urging him to understand you have an actual um existence that is separate from the one that you're getting all caught up in you're identifying too strongly with this current body. It's not that you shouldn't identify with this body, right? But you're identifying too strongly to the um, loss of identification with your actual self, your, your awake, your awakened self. Yeah. Right. And we, we hear this lexicon, you know, all, all the time, right? Like this, it's like we're in a dream or the matrix and we have to wake up, you know, everyone, you know, people are like waking up on the planet and stuff like that. This is really what it's talking about. The nature of the mind is flickering. Sometimes it accepts something and immediately it rejects the same thing. Accepting and rejecting is the process of the mind in contact with the five objects of sense gratification, form, taste, smell, sound, and touch. In its speculative way, the mind comes in touch with the objects of sense gratification. And when the living entity desires a particular type of body, he gets it. Therefore, the body is an offering by the laws of material nature. A living entity accepts a body and comes out again into the material world to enjoy or suffer according to the construction of the body. Unless we have a particular type of body, we cannot enjoy or suffer according to our mental proclivities inherited from the previous life. A particular type of body is actually offered to us according to our mental condition at the time of death. So another pause there. Yeah, you were saying that you're mentioning that earlier. Uh, yeah. So it's two things. Um, the factors for why we get a body. Uh, one is our actual karma, like the things that we do uh, produces a type of karmic reaction that determines the type of body we get. So like a deformed body, you know, there was karma from a previous life and then also desire, you know, it's like I must have had some kind of desire to be a volleyball player. Otherwise, you know, why did I get this body? <laughs> uh, you know, and then, of course, the situation to, to fulfill that desire is there. Uh, and likewise, you know, having a male body or a female body, uh, uh, sexual orientation as well. Like these things are all determined by our previous activities and proclivities. And then mental condition like what you're thinking of uh if you want to be enjoy as a dog you'll get the body of a dog right uh and you'll be able to enjoy or suffer you know 
according to those mental proclivities. So is that is that clear? Does that make yeah. sense? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that this is this is really nice to understand. I mean, this is kind of like basic Bhagavad Gita 101 yeah. philosophy, but for those who haven't heard or aren't too familiar with the transmigration of the soul, it's not anything random. It's not just like, oh, like I'm a human now and maybe I believe in reincarnation, I'll be a human again and you know, or I can just kind of chart my own path or whatever i desire uh i'm just seeing if yeah okay it's like no it's you know it's not so willy-nilly like that um you know there's an in-depth science of karma it's like some people say like you chose your parents you know i used to believe that it's like well you chose this this body, this birth, this family, you chose everything like totally consciously. It's like, I'm sorry. No, that's not true. <laughs> like who would choose, you know, to have a terrible body, uh, unless you're very spiritually intelligent, you know, but most people that are in those kind of conditions are not, you know, uh, Okay. All right. Uh, do you want to continue? Uh, uh, yeah. We're yeah. almost out of time. Uh, we're, we are pretty close. And uh, this is still, it's going to be pretty weighty, pretty weighty subject matter coming up again. Um, maybe, maybe just one two more paragraphs yeah, I, I still i do think we can make it though because we started late okay so I think we're more at, like at the 10 minute mark right now actually yeah all right you can go ahead and read the next two okay the luminous future where we are at the luminous planets right yeah yeah okay yeah for sure do the yeah. thing here. Uh, yep. Okay, yes. The luminous planets, like the sun, moon, and or stars, reflect themselves in different types of reservoirs, like water, oil, or ghee. The reflection moves according to the movement of the reservoir. The reflection of the moon is on the water, and the moving water makes the moon also appear to be moving. But actually, the moon is not moving. Similar, similarly, by mental concoction, the living entity attains different kinds of bodies, although actually he has no connection with such bodies. But on account of illusion, being enchanted by the influence of Maya, the living entity thinks that he belongs to a particular type of body. That is the way the conditioned life suppose a living entity is now a human form of body. He thinks that he belongs to the human community or a particular country or a particular place. He identifies himself in that way with unnecessarily and unnecessarily prepares for another body, which is not required by him. Such desires and mental options are the cause of different types of bodies. The covering influence of material nature is so strong that the living entity is satisfied in whatever body he gets and he identifies with that body. The great pleasure, therefore, I beg to request you. I beg to request you not to be overwhelmed by the dictation of your of your mind and body. Wait, hold on. Um, yeah. Right. Just kidding. Let's pause. Let's st let's stop there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good place. Because uh, this remind was that. That is a good place. Yeah. To stop. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah, the next two kind of go together. Yeah. So, um, th but also this reminded me of a lecture that I heard recently by Bhakti Vigan Goswami. I just, and I just realized I have notes right here on the computer that I can look at. Uh, on the Uddhava Gita, which is actually, it's considered like a continuation of Bhagavad Gita, but it's to uh, Uddhava, who's one of the Yadus. So he's a, a pure devotee born in the Yadu dynasty, similar age to Krishna. And he's one of Krishna's best friends, just like Arjuna is. But Uddhava uh, is more intellectual as opposed to Arjuna being more of a warrior, more of a kshatriya. Uddhava is more of a brahmana. Um, so Krishna gets really deep into philosophy with him. Like I haven't read it, but I've, I've heard sections of it, such as this one. And this is really cool stuff. So Krishna is explaining to Uddhava this same thing. He actually uses the same um, analogy. It's like, it's actually kind of uncanny. I don't know if I've, I think maybe I discussed this once with devotees, how like this is kind of like a um, foreshadowing of the Bhagavad Gita and then the Uddhava Gita by extension. So Krishna is explaining how uh, the soul is not actually directly connected with matter, that the soul and matter are totally separate. They're asanga, they're aloof from each other. Um, but at the same time, we get really wrapped up into material energy, right? It's like really hard for us. To, it's like if, if someone just like walked up to you and just like punches you in the face, it would be hard for you not to get upset, right? What more if like someone like walked up to your wife or your kid and punched them in the face, you're, you know, you'd be like rearing to go. And someone's like, cool, cool, it, cool, it. right? So this is actually what's happening with Kamsa. He's being threatened. His life is being threatened. And he's like, trying to defend himself. Uh, so Vasudeva is explaining, like, you're actually, you're, you're tripping, bro. Like, you're tripping. You're identifying with something that's not actually you. So Krishna is trying to explain to Uddhava, um, like, why we, like, how, actually, more like the mechanics, the inner mechanics of how we are attached with our false ego. And so there are three aspects to the false ego. Uh, kartitva, karanatva, and karyatvam. So there'll be a quiz on those. So just jot those down. No, there are no quiz. <laughs> uh, and, and then he gives, he gives one general analogy and three specific analogies for each one. So the general analogy is uh like watching a movie basically he, he uses like dancers on a stage right singing singing and dancing um just as one may imitate those who he is seeing perform similarly the soul although not the doer becomes captivated captivated by material intelligence and is thus forced to imitate its qualities so it's like when you watch a movie or you know you're in the movie theater and you're like you know jerking and like your body is kind of like moving, you're dancing a little, your feet are tapping, right? It's like that. We're, we're not like moving, completely imitating them physically, but internally, like we're definitely, what's to speak of our emotions, right? They're like completely identifying, right? When you watch a movie, like that's a very good drama, you completely identify. That's the, that is the uh, symptom of good screenplay, you know, good direction of theater is it literally stirs your soul right it like captures your heart it's captivating so krishna says that is what's going on here 
the soul is being captivated, but it's literally just watching a screen. You know, I mean, think about how, you know, your nerve nervous system works, how we see things. It's just, you know, it's just light, you know, being, you know, hitting receptors and electrical signals are projecting onto the screen of our consciousness. And, and then we have this experience and we totally identify it. While the soul itself, it's like it has nothing to, you know, it's not directly connected. So the three examples are uh, just like, okay, one, just like trees appearance of quivering when the trees are reflected in agitated water. So that's the one that Vasudev just gave. The second, like the earth's appearance of spinning due to one's own spinning his eyes around. Or like, you know, you, you start spinning around a circle and then you stop and it looks like the room is still spinning, right? So yeah. Christian uses that in a second. And third, just like the world of a fantasy or a dream. So he also gave the dream analogy, mm. right? So mm. this is in, this is pretty cool. Two of these analogies, he gives the same. So there's Kartitva is the first one of general identification like the agency, like I am the doer, I am the one suffering or enjoying. Uh, so that he's saying the tree isn't moving, but the water is moving. So the soul isn't acting, but it's assuming the agency of, the, of, uh, of activity. So it looks like the tree is moving. And so you say, oh, I'm moving. I am the one who's moving. You know, so it's like you're, you're watching the show. And you feel all distraught and you're like, I am distraught. But it's like, if you actually said that out loud, people would be like, are you crazy? Like you're a, you know, you're a spectator. You're not, a, you're not the actor, uh, but it's convincing. Karnatwa, the second is we, when we identify with the qualities of the mind. So how we think about ourselves. Um, rolling, okay. Like, uh, I think example would be like being a victim or like I'm weak or I'm strong or um, I'm, yeah, what, any different kind of qualities. Rolling is the, so rolling is the quality of the eyes. When we see the world through the eyes or lens of our qualities, we play that role and reinforce the false ego. You know, just look at me. I'm a victim. Can't you see, like, I have these qualities, right? So it's because we're looking through the lens of a certain set of qualities, and we take that to be ourself. So that's the second. And, and then we we do. We uh, self-fulfilling prophecy, right, is what occurs. And then the last card is identifying with the experiences, so more like physical, the actual type of experience or feeling that we're having, you know. I am feeling this sadness or whatever. So yeah, this vicious cycle of samskaras, which is the Sanskrit word for impressions. Uh, and we reconfirm this identification with the body. So yeah, so Krishna's main point to Uddhava is you have to make a strong determination to look objectively at the mind and to not identify with it. Right. Uh, and yeah, he gives these very nice examples, analogies of how, um, how we get caught up and how identifying with that just reinforces a false identity, this temporary body, this temporary designation, temporary qualities right uh yeah whereas when and then the nature of this world is to give us experiences that challenge that you know this is what's going to happen if you say i'm just this it's a matter of fate that that will be challenged you know just wait if it seems like your identifications are working out for you you know eventually they're not you know, because you're something actually much better. You're something much, much greater. And Krishna 
is trying, he's pulling all the tricks he can to get you to remember who you actually are. And so bad karma, bad experiences, it's actually all part of the Lord's mercy. It's not like he's spiteful. You know, it's like, this is, it will work. It will work. It might take several lifetimes, but eventually you'll come to the point where you accept the suffering as an ally to help you disidentify from the screen of constant drama, you know, of dualities of pleasure, pain, good, bad, right? All these things to the transparent quality of the soul in which the image of God can shine through. So that's, that's the point of it. That's what we're really going for. With this, yeah, yeah. Have anything to add, Prabhu? I was just, I was deep in the pocket on that one. I'm, I'm just thinking of all kinds of things like this is just blowing my mind, you know. Like I, I, we started this book and I really did not know it was going to be so deep. I didn't know that this book was going to be getting into really like. Bhagavatam type of um, things here, um, concepts, I guess you would call them. You know, yeah, um, let me just add that the Uva Gita is in the eleventh canto. Oh, sure, I didn't. I failed to mention that. That's what where you'll find eleventh canto. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, philosophy. That really um, does not uh, surprise me that it's in in there. Um, yeah, so these are just concepts that are just blowing my mind right now. That's all I can say, you know, it's, this is just so wild. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just to think about all these things, I, I probably just need a second. Like, I will probably go back and listen to this again and just kind of start sifting through it because I mean, this is what Krishna consciousness has always been just a, a huge elaborate tapestry or giant machine. You know, I've always used those two, those two, um, you know, analogies, I guess, you know, um, just full of moving parts, full of different threads doing different things. Um, so yeah, I am going to have to go back and listen to, to everything again. And, um, yeah. Yeah. I really I encourage that. Not just, yeah. you know, for my words, I'm, you know, I was just repeating things that I've heard and that's really all that we're doing. Uh, and when we repeat them, you know, it's, it sinks deeper and, uh, we need to, we need to chew on them with our intelligence. Like that's what Krishna is saying. What was that one line I just saw? Uh, you said it really nicely. Oh, yeah. One who desires the highest goal in life should should, in spite of all these difficulties, use his intelligence to keep himself safe on a spiritual platform. Um. Atmanatmanam Udare, that's Bhagavad Gita, chapter six. One must save himself with his intelligence. Inat my Vatmanajita. So it's not just to matter, like, it's not cheap. You know, it's not something that's just going to come, uh, just kind of fall out of the sky, you know, spiritual awakening. Like you can have those experiences, you know, we've, we've had experiences like that. Uh, but that's kind of like the bowling ball hitting like the bumper, you know, <laughs> like keep you on track. Like you have to, you know, learn how to steer, you know, otherwise you're just going to keep bumping around with your karma one body to the next, not understanding how you are implicating yourself. Like how you are keeping yourself bound. That's what Krishna wants you to learn. Yeah. You know, he's throwing down the rope, you know, and he's going to do his part. 
but you have to put in the effort. Actually, I was thinking about this the other day. It's like, why doesn't he just pull us up? You know, why isn't it just completely mercy? Why do we need the effort? It's because Krishna doesn't want it to be cheap for you. If it was cheap for you, you would take it cheaply. Yeah. You know, but if you actually apply yourself to it and you go through the experience of maturation, it's like a seedling. If it, if the shell stays on top of the seedling and it has to struggle more, it's going to be very robust. Yeah. It's going to develop muscles, you know, in a sense. So likewise, he wants us to develop intellectual muscle. So we become our own best friend. Uh, you know, that's what he's saying in, in chapter six to one who has conquered his mind. His mind is the best of friends for one who has failed to do so. His mind remains the worst of enemies. He said, like, regardless of how much mercy I pour into you, if you're not training your mind, if you're not sharpening the sword of your your mind intellect, you're going to be sabotaging yourself. And this so this is exactly what's happening. Kamsa is totally sabotaging himself. He, he's seeing the image reflected in water and it's getting all disturbed. And he's saying, oh, that's happening to me. Right. This is exactly what we're going through in life. We're getting all shook up, you know, but that's not us. That's not you. You're something much greater. So we have to. Yeah. So back again to your point is going back. You know, churning it over, giving it a couple relit. Like some classes, you know, by some of our great swamis, spiritual masters in our movement, you can just take one and listen to it for a week, you know, just several times. Take notes. You know, I can't encourage people enough to take notes in class. Like I do it fanatically, you know, maybe too much. Um, but it's a process. You'll learn how to learn better. Um, but you have to go back. It's not enough to just hear it once. This is why actually reading Prabhupada's books is so powerful and transformative because, and I didn't understand this at first. I was like, why is he repeating himself? He already said this, you know, a couple of verses ago, a couple of pages ago, the previous page, he said the same thing. Like why, you know, it's like, because we need that. We need to, Hit it over and over and over and over again. Then you, you'll you'll get it. You know, practice, yeah. repetition, chant. You know, it's like these things work. Yeah. yeah. Jai. Jai and then it'll eventually come up. You know, the knowledge will turn into wisdom, right? just by repeatedly uh, bringing your awareness and your attention to to these points you know it'll start as theory and then it just the more that you remember it then you'll be like oh wait let me apply that i see i'm being constant right now well, what was it that vasudev said what was it that krishna said oh that's right yeah 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 this is like this is the most precious gift you know yeah. uh, this this is this is something really tangible. You can take this home to the bank, you know, very uh, incredibly um, helpful and useful, useful, practical, you know, totally. Yeah. yeah. Well, we should be able to make it through the chapter one, um, probably by the next show. Like I said, no show this weekend because of Ratha Yatra. So this has been a power-packed episode. Again, getting into some deep truth and deep things that uh, I really, I, I wasn't really 100% sure what to expect, but we're just getting into like, um, you know, deeper and deeper water here. So thank you, Bamra. For your insight, you. for your your knowledge, um, thank you so much for that. And um, let's end this session uh, with uh, Mahamatra.
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे and hey, Bob, my friend, and thank you, audience, for watching us. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. And have a wonderful day, week, year, month, time, happening. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>